Hi guys, and welcome to practice number eight in our course. In this practice, you will enable the fast start failover and examine how it works. The specifications of the data guard implementation in this practice are the same as the specifications of the data guard implementation that we configured in practice number three, except the FSFO setting. FSFO will be enabled in this practice. In high level in this practice, you will first prepare the appliances. You will work on a copy of the appliances that you created in practice number three, configure the broker. After that, you need to examine the value of the static connect identifier property and fix it if it needs fixing. Then you will implement the procedure to configure and enable the FSFO. After that, you will test the FSFO functionality. You will test how the observer will react when the primary database becomes unavailable. You will also test the automatic reinstatement functionality in the observer. As I said earlier, you will work on a copy of the appliances that you created in the practice number three. As always, you open the appliances in virtual box, start them, and make sure the databases are up and running. And as always, I created two positions. One connected to the primary database, and another one connected to the standby database. Let's verify that the broker configuration is enabled. As we have done in many practices, create three monitoring sessions to monitor the alert log files of the databases and the broker log file. Before talking about the need to display the value of the static connect identifier property, let me explain a bit about this property. The static connect identifier property is used by the broker to connect remotely to a database when it performs some actions like failing over and database reinstatement. This property is automatically set by the broker. When the broker sets the value of this property, it gets host name of the database from the local listener parameter. And that's exactly why you need to make sure that the value set to this property is correct. If the host name in this property need to be fixed in any database in your configuration, fix the local listener parameter first. Then instruct the broker to reset the static connect identifier property. The broker will read the host name from the local listener parameter and fix the property accordingly. Make sure that the static identifier property in both databases is pointed to the right host. When doing the following sub steps, keep your eye on the monitoring session of the broker log file. So let's display the value of the property in your databases. As you see, the host name is correct in the primary database, but it is not correct in the standby database. You must fix this before proceed with configuring the FSFO. If you feel not to do that, the broker will not be able to connect to the standby database when it wants to fail over or reinstate the database. Connect to the standby database using SQL Plus and display the local listener value.
as you see the host name is incorrect in this parameter and should be fixed fix the host value in the local listener parameter in the standby database restart the listener Instruct the broker to reset the static connect identifier property. As you see in the output, the property has been successfully set by the broker. Stop and start the MRP process. Our databases are now ready for configuring the FSFO. Let's have a look at the current FSFO configuration in the broker. The fast start failover is disabled, but you can see the values of its settings. For example, the threshold and the lag time are 30 seconds each. Define the target standby of the FSFO in the two databases. Define the fast start failover threshold. Set the acceptable lag between the primary and standby databases. Make sure that the fast start failover PMY shutdown is enabled. Make sure that the fast start failover O2 re in state is enabled. After you define the settings of the FSFO, we are now good to enable it. Start the observer in the standby database system. Be aware that in a production environment, this step must be done in a separate computer. The observer should have its own system. After you start the observer process, you don't receive the control in the command line. This DGMGRL window will be dedicated to the observer process. Observe the new enabled configuration. The first time I ran the command, I received the Aura 16819 warning message. This is normal. The broker will take some time till it detects the new configuration. Just wait for a few seconds and try running the same command again.
in my case, after a couple of minutes, the command reports that the FSFO is enabled and the configuration is healthy. We have finished enabling the FSFO. Let's now test it. I will mimic a primary database failover and examine the FSFO response. Observe the output of the observer window and the alert log files. In my case, the observer waited for about 50 seconds and then it started the failover. The failover itself took about 15 seconds. To verify the failover was successful, connect as normal user to both databases. You will notice that you can successfully connect to AuraDB S2. Mount the primary database and notice how the observer will respond. In my case, the observer waited for 15 seconds before it started trying to reinstate. The first reinstatement attempt failed. When I checked the monitoring session of the broker log file, it reports a communication issue to the Aura DBS2 database. The listener is unable to recognize the required service. I think in my case, this is because I restarted the listener a short time ago. I will give the observer some time to retry and see how it will go. The observer will keep trying every one minute to connect to the AuraDB S2 database. After five attempts, the observer managed to make a successful connection to AuraDB S2 and it successfully finished the reinstatement of the database AuraDB. Display the data guard configuration information. AuraDB S2 is the primary database. AuraDB is the physical standby database. The status of the configuration is success. Let's try now switching over back to AuraDB database. You can watch the monitoring sessions while the switching over is going on. Switch over is finished and it was successful. AuraDB is now the primary database and AuraDB S2 is the physical standby database. The configuration in this practice has a new component, which is the observer. To shut down the whole configuration, you need to stop the observer first. You should do that in a DGMGRL session different from the one that you used to start the observer. When you stop the observer, 
you will gain the control back in the session that you used to start the observer. Nothing special in the rest of the shutting down procedure. You just shut down the databases and then the appliances. We have seen in this practice how easy it is to enable the FSFO in the DataGuard broker. We have also seen that the FSFO automatically performs the switch over when the primary database becomes unavailable. In real life, you always have to test the FSFO functionality after you enable it. Please do not delete the appliances that we used in this practice. We will need them for a future practice in this course. Thanks for watching and see you in the next lecture.